Hi guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we're going to have some Division 20 Online gameplay in the Bantamweight Division. I'm going to be using Peter Yan, and my opponent is going to be using Henry Cejudo. And straight off the bat, when my opponent is picking Henry Cejudo, I know that he's going to want to ground and pound me, and he's going to want to fight on the ground because that's Henry Cejudo's strong point, is his wrestling and ground and pound, and the way the meta works this year, Henry Cejudo isn't the best fighter unless you're very dominant on the ground so when he picks Henry Cejudo I figured of who to pick and for me the best counterpart to Cejudo would be Petr Jan because he's the most balanced fighter in this division I believe he's the best fighter in this division and his boxing is maybe the second best in the division and the way the mechanics work this year boxing is the matter so when the loaded screen loads up now you'll see that my, this opponent's actually beat me twice, and I beat him once, so when I saw that, I knew it should be a good fight, and the game plan started forming in my head already that, okay, I want to see how he tries to work in these takedowns, if he's a good opponent, and if he knows what he's doing, which he should, because he's a level 20 fighter, he'll try and mix in the takedowns with striking, so I don't expect it, and because he's the shorter fighter, he's got a smaller reach, he's going to have to do a better job of that, so... As you see, instantly he's shooting for these takedowns, and they're quite, they're not mixed in, they're not, I'd say, if I was using uh, Henry Cejudo, I'd have to try working the takedowns, and as you can see, I'm keeping the distance, because I can just see he's just shooting for these takedowns constantly, and he's trying to get me in the clinch, and so, by being at a distance, because he's short already, he's not going to be able to get these takedowns, and when he's going for the clinch attempts, I'm just moving my head, so, off of the bat, he's very eager to get me on the ground, so, I'm staying relaxed, I'm keeping my distance because I know he's going to, his first round he's going to keep firing them, firing them, firing them. And on the feet I could, I had I had the feeling already that if this stays on the feet for a round or two that it's my fight to lose. Because I can see the way he's not mixing in the strikes and the way he's backing up against the fence. If your opponent is doing this, if they're backing up against the fence and they're doing that throughout the whole fight you're going to have an easy time finishing them because all you've got to do is break their guard, keep them there and you'll get the finish eventually. So he does what good work in eventually getting me to ground. What he did was he clinched me and then he tripped me and as I went to spam the kick thinking he'd jump on top he was smart enough to let me miss the kick and then jump on top. So with his first ground pound attempt he done some decent damage but then what I've done is I've picked up on the strikes and now I'm moving my head to avoid the straight. So right now is this this exchange here is going to dictate how the fight is going to go for him so in my head if i do one in these exchanges and i manage to get up and he doesn't do too much damage then even if it does go onto the feet i'm not going to worry so i'm denying his transitions and i'll i get up so he didn't do much work on the ground and right now i know okay this this should be all right he had full stamina when he took me down he was trying to ground and pound me, I managed to get up easily. So yeah, so now I know, okay, I can pressure him, he goes for the big head kick and misses. So I punch him with a body shot and then I sneak in a beautiful um, elbow with my lead arm right on the button that was. And elbows are vicious on this game, especially if you time them correctly. But I don't throw them too much, so I don't want to get hit with the counter. So I sneak them in where I can. And as you can see, my opponent's constantly trying to clinch. He's... He doesn't understand that he needs to mix these in, his takedown attempts or even the clinch attempts. So I get the drop here, and now that's my round automatically, just the way the judging works on this game. He's against the fence, so I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. He sneaks in a good takedown here, but because of how much is left on the clock, I'm not worried. And what I done well there was I forced the takedown out of him, so next time I pressure him, I want to be expecting him to try force the takedown so that first round's mine he didn't do much on the ground and as he saw i managed to get the drop of a beautiful uppercut so going into round two i know that one he's not mixing any striking well with the takedowns two if he doesn't get the takedown he panics and tries to go for the clinch and three which is his biggest weakness he keeps leading uh he keeps going back towards the cage so I know this round that if he doesn't start changing his game plan, he's going to get finished. And so 
what I'm doing here is I'm I'm evaluating. I'm seeing what he's trying to do. I sneak in a leg kick there because I don't want to. I don't need to do that because I feel like the boxing's working so well at this moment. So as you can see, he disengages, goes really really far back, shoots for a takedown, and it's the same patterns, the same things he's doing the first fight. So. Whoever you're fighting, just try to look for patterns on how they approach these takedowns or clinches because I think that will be a detrimental part on how you form your game plan to beat this fighter. So I can see his patterns already and I'm fairly confident with how the fight's going. So right now, I'm just waiting for him to miss a few more takedown attempts and back up against the cage and another finish should be coming shortly. So I'm using my boxing, I'm trying to use my movement to stay away from these big takedown attempts and my opponent because of how i rocked him the previous round he's not looking to exchange these punches so again i get the rock here and the worst thing to do is go back towards the cage which he tries doing and i managed to knock him down with a beautiful head kick and here i disengage from the situation because i don't want to waste my stamina while being on the fence with him so i disengage because i know his blocks low and i know that he's gonna go back there anyway so he goes back towards the fence Again, this is the best position to be in. Uppercut breaks the guard. He's still set on having his back towards the fence and he shoots for a takedown, which I was expecting. So I move the way, get the drop again. And unfortunately for him, I managed to get the finish. Obviously, he wasn't too happy because he just quit the game. So thank you for watching this short video today. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.